Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, my name is Chanel, the owner of Three Balls Handmade Soaps and More. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I made this hot process lemon and turmeric soap. As always, I like to show y'all everything that I will be working with for today. And first up, we have a, some annatto seed that I have infused, well, the powder that I have infused in olive oil. It's been infusing since 520 of this year, so I'm pretty excited to try this out. We also have some lemon peel powder here, as well as I think I'm going to add turmeric powder to this, I think. I kind of go back and forth, but I think we are going to put just a little bit of turmeric in here. I got my crock pot. Y'all know I had to try this again. This will be my second time making a hot process soap. So I'm very, very, very excited about that. Now here I have my two spatulas as well as my protective eyewear, my stick blender, and we got three uh, lemons here. I am gonna be juicing these and we're gonna be using the juice. I probably won't use the peel because I have the powder over here. And we also have a scale as well as some bowls right here. Um, I think I said spatula, I think. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my table and then we will go ahead and get started. All right, so first up, we're gonna make our lemon juice. Now right here, I'm just rolling my lemons on the table to kind of soften them up just a little bit. Right here, I cut them in half. So I used those three lemons, gave me about eight ounces. I think it was about eight, or maybe a little bit, a little bit more than eight ounces of juice for this soap. All right, so once I was done cutting all of my lemons in half, it was then time for us to make our juice. Now for this soap, I did replace 50% of my liquid with the lemon juice. Alright, so once I was done with my lemon juice, I did notice that I had just a little bit of pulp in there, which I wasn't worried about because I don't plan on selling this loaf, so I did not strain it. Now, you can put this in ice cubes, your lemon juice in ice cubes, or I put mine in the top of my fridge and let it sit there for a few hours to get cold. Now, while that was going on, I did continue weighing out the rest of my ingredients, and I added my hard butters and coconut directly to my crock pot to go ahead and let those start melting first. So right here I am just weighing out my infusion and for this soap I did replace 50% of my olive oil with this annatto infusion and do keep in mind that of course the more annatto you use the more orange your soap will be. Alright, so once I had all of my my two different olive oils weighed out, my regular and my infusion, I then added those to my crock pot with the rest of my ingredients so they can all melt together. Now, if you are looking for a more detailed hot process soap making video, I will have one linked in the description, so be sure to check out that one as well. All right, so right here, I am just weighing out the amount of lemon juice that I need 
before I add in my distilled water to make up the rest. Because remember, I only replaced 50% of my liquid with the lemon juice. Alright, so here I am outside in my well ventilated area and you always want to add your sodium hydroxide into your liquid never the other way around and always make sure that you have on closed toe shoes gloves pants long sleeves mask goggles and you're in a well ventilated area all that good stuff be sure to protect yourself when you're working with sodium hydroxide now once i added that into my liquid i then just continued to stir it up and you will see it change colors a little bit All right, so once back inside and my oils had melted down, my butter, it was then time for me to go ahead and add my liquid directly into my oils. And you do not have to wait on these to cool down. Since this is a hot process soap, everything is going to cook anyway. So it's completely fine to go ahead and add the water loss solution while it's hot. Once I added that together, it was then time for me to just stick blend until I reached trace. And y'all, it did not take long for this soap to come to trace. And look at this color. This color was absolutely gorgeous. If only I had left well enough alone. But I'm going to make this again. I probably do cold process, but use this same infusion because I do still have a little bit left. But this color was absolutely beautiful. Y'all let me know your thoughts down in the comment section about this color at, at this particular moment. So if you like this color right here, let, let me know what you think of this color. I think it's very, very, very vibrant and very beautiful. All right, so after I reached Trace, it was then time for me to put the lid on. Now I did check this I would say about every 10 minutes. Yeah, it was about like every 10 minutes or so. And right here, it was very, very, very light and fluffy. I mean, it was like real light and airy. So I just continued to stir it up. And then once I was done, I just put the lid back on. All right, so here I am just checking on my soap again. And at this point, it was still somewhat fluffy but not as much as it was in the beginning and you can somewhat see how the texture was starting to change a little bit so i just stirred it up a little bit and then put the lid back on and checked it again in about another 10 minutes or so All right, so here I am again, and at this point, it was starting to volcano a little bit. Y'all, I, I don't, I can't remember if someone mentioned it in the comments. I'm going to have to go back and look. But to all of the hot process soap experts out there, what causes my soap, what causes the, um, my soap to volcano like that? Can y'all let me know down in the comments? Because it, this happened to me the first time and then the second time, which I mean, I wasn't alarmed by it, but y'all let me know what causes that. I think somebody mentioned it. I'm going to have to go back and look, but at this point it did have like a mashed potato texture. So I just put the lid back on and here we are again, about 30, 35 minutes later. And as you can see, it was like the top was very translucent. So I just stirred it up again and then it was time for me to check my soap. 
So right here, I am just taking a little bit of distilled water and touching the top of my soap. And then I just took a pH strip and placed that right where I had applied the water. And now I am just putting it up against my tester here to see, I know it's not called a tester. What is that called? My chart, chart, that's what it is. Just put it up against my chart to see where we are. And from the looks of it, I am at a 10. So, all right, now right here, I am just going to add in a little bit of lemon peel powder. Now you don't have to add in this lemon peel powder if you do not want to. Do keep in mind that if you use lemon peel powder, it will definitely give your soap like a brownish tint. And for this turmeric, I actually ended up adding a little bit too much. And that wasn't even like a full teaspoon. So I definitely should have went with like one fourth of a teaspoon. And I also did add lemon essential oil to this. Oh, and one more thing. With the lemon peel powder, you can do one, I think it's one teaspoon per pound of oils. So I definitely should have uh, could have cut back on that as well because like I said lemon peel powder would leave your soap with a brownish color so right here once I added all that stuff in there my turmeric lemon peel powder and lemon essential oil I then just continued to stir that up until everything was blended together So once I was done making sure that everything was mixed up together, it was then time for me to go making sure my additives were mixed up together into my soap. It was then time for me to go ahead and scoop out my soap, put it in the mold. And y'all, to me, this color had turned into like, it almost looked like sweet potato pie to me. Sweet potato pie feeling, that's what it looked like to me. But I just continued to scoop it out. And then I, once I would do, like I would scoop a little bit out and then take it and like slam it on the table a little bit. And then I would go back and do the same thing again. I scoop a little bit more, then slam it on the table, then scoop a little bit more. So I continued to do that until I had all of the soap in the mold. All right, y'all, so once I had all of my soap in the mold, y'all, I I was at a loss at what to do with the top of this soap. Um, I, I, Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, I was just confused. It kind of threw me for a loop, but the finished product did look pretty. The finished product looked pretty cool. I must admit that, but that's why all I could do was just tap on the top because I didn't know what else to do with it. So here we are the next day. And now typically you can unmold this, I think, when I was doing research on it, it said something about like within 12 hours or so, but I always, I'm so used to doing cold process to, I just continue to let mine sit. And, um, oh, and another thing when making hot processed soap, y'all let me know this too. Okay. The norm, the default is set at 38. Now, do I have to keep that water at 38 or can I lower, lower my water? Y'all let me know that. Let me know if I can lower that water or do, or if it needs to stay at 38. Because this soap right here was, which it could have sit. Well, this did sit for 24 hours, but it probably could have sat a little bit longer. However, I was ready to unmold it and cut it. But anyway, um, y'all let me know because this soap was still a little bit soft. And I'm wondering if that has something to do with my water being so high. So let me know. Now right here, I am getting ready to cut this soap. And y'all, when I cut this soap, I could have hollered, okay? Like, I could have hollered right here when I turned it around and I seen that spot in the middle. I could have screamed. But I did get tickled a little bit because I'm like, what in the world? But okay. So right here, I noticed that I did have a few drag marks on that first bar that I cut. So therefore, I flipped it over on its side and just continued to cut.
right, so once I was all done cutting my soap, it was then time for me to stamp them. Now this stamp I will have listed down below. No, I am not sponsored whatsoever. I wish, but no, I am not sponsored whatsoever. However, I still will link where I got my stamp from. I ordered this from Etsy, so that shop will be linked in the description. Now, do keep in mind that this is a custom stamp, so therefore I created my design over in Canva and then just uploaded that to them for anyone that may be wondering. So, and I put down the saran wrap. If you're new to my channel, the, I put the saran wrap down to keep soap from getting into my stamp. And we are all done, y'all. This is our lemon and turmeric soap. Y'all let me know what you think. Take a look at the top. Y'all look at the top. It looks like crunch is on the top. Um, but So that's all I have for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving us a thumbs up. And if you have not done so already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And to all of our subscribers out there, we thank you guys so much. And until next time, I will see you guys later.